So there's a lot to talk about today. The big news being Dr. Nigel Clark being appointed to the position of Deputy Managing Director of the IMF, one of the highest positions in one of the most powerful institutions in the entire world. It is a big deal with many local implications as well. Uh, but our main topic of discussion is those interest rates. So let me introduce our panel for this evening. We have Ramon Small Ferguson from Barita, and we're also joined by economist Chris Stokes. Uh, Ramon is CEO of Barita Investments. Hi, Ramon. Hi, Chris. Hello. How are you? Good, good. Hi, Kalila. Ramon there. Okay, great. So before we get into you know the interest rate discussion that we had planned, I want to get your reaction to Dr. Clark being appointed as Deputy Managing Director of the IMF, starting with Ramon. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, Dr. Clark's appointment is significant, not only for him, but for Jamaica as a country. I mean, we're, we're absolutely proud of him. I'm sure he's he's eminently qualified for, for the role and his experience, not only the, the demonstrable experience with economic management as, you know, finance minister of Jamaica, but even his experience in the private sector before is an excellent blend uh, for a role like this. You know, and I think what he's demonstrated uh, here in Jamaica as finance minister is something that he can now proliferate on the global stage uh, in this, as you have described it, very powerful position uh, with the International Monetary Fund. So. I mean, it's, it's very historic for Jamaica and the region, and it, it you know, it, it shows that um, there is now an opportunity for representation uh, for this region on that stage. So it's fantastic stuff. But Chris, don't we still need him? <laughs> yes, um, but like all, you know, we have a long history of Jamaicans. You, you know, you know, we have done well domestically, internationally. And in a sense, they become to belong to the world. Um, I think what you're alluding to is the continuing challenges that we have as a country and the role that Dr. Clark played on seizing what Peter Phillips had started um, as Minister of Finance, deepening it, broad, broadening it, and bringing a certain intellectual rigor to it. But let, let me say first, though, that that you know you, you asked the question. You know, a response. And, um, it's it's a great deal of, of 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 pride in the first place for a Jamaican to 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 be elevated to that position, a Monroeian to be elevated to that position. That's the first thing. You're you're it's from Monroe. What's that? You're from Monroe. Yes, yes, yes. It, ah. it, yes. All it, the Monroeians are proud yes. today. I tell you, proud book. <laughs> a, a sense of relief. Um. And, and and hope for the IMF that that they they seem now to be willing to hear and be be more open to the voices of the persons that ostensibly they are trying to help. Yet none of them are have been in in, in very high positions right now. The other um, deputy managing directors will be from China, one from China, one from one from the US. Um, one from Japan, and um, the lady Ms. Saye, that's that's leave that left. Oh, there's more than one deputy managing director. Well, there, there, there are well one at a high level and three others. What I'm saying, one is from from of those, one is from Japan, one is from China, one is from the U.S. and one was from Li Liberia. She's the one is, that who is leaving. My point is that the countries that are borrowing and need help and restructuring are not among those at the decision-making table at that level. And it is good to see Dr. Clark there now. And I think that's a good thing for the, the IMF to push back on a critique that it has justifiably been exposed to over, over many years. Mm, but Ramon, the IMF is traditionally run by the Europeans while the United States runs the World Bank. So what is the likelihood that Dr. Clark or somebody like him could ever be uh, elevated to the highest position of managing director? So, so that's a very good question, right? I mean, I think you know, this is unprecedented, as has been said, right? And it represents now an opportunity for, for merit to shine through. As I said, I mean, it's, there's no 
argument that he's very well qualified uh, for this. And as has been said, you know, the perspective that he will bring from the, this, the, his former seat, well, his current seat, as finance minister of Jamaica, you know, the fact is that Jamaica has been, I think, probably most representative of what the IMF's goals have been set out to be over the years. And consequent to that fact, he brings a, a unique perspective to the, the decision making table, right? So I think, you know, it, it will be important to see how he executes over the course of the next several years. And I think that will feed heavily into whether he is able to, to move from deputy to actual managing director. So we'll see. So before we move on, Chris, who should be the next finance minister? <laughs> well, they, they, you know, they, that, that's one question. There's a, the, the, the other question, and perhaps a, a more relevant question now, is what is the best person to have in that position in the current political context? In a context where the, the Minister of Finance has to be an, uh, an elected member of parliament, uh, where an election is not too far from now, I think that constrains um, the, both from a time frame perspective and the fact that they need to, you have to go through and um, uh, you have to find a constituency it constrains the constraints the, the the pool that meets that criteria we have of course heard of 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 uh, Fable williams you know cfa um former um, minister of Port portfolio in the ministry she has bravely taken on probably the hardest ministry to run outside of finance and the public service which is education there's no way to do a good job there she has taken it on um, I, I think she has the the the, 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 the wherewithal to, to 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 at least hold that position now. Is she in the long run the best person to be um, minister of finance and to follow what has been a, an outstanding outstanding act? I, I would reserve judgment on that, as I believe that there are many people out there who can you know put themselves forward and would be, would be excellent candidates. Who you think it should be, Ramon? Yeah. I mean, I thought Chris did a very good job with, with answering the question. <laughs> but he never answered a question. <laughs> That's why I think he did a good job. <laughs> but you know, it's very hard to, to fill a great man or a great woman's shoes. So, you know, given how um, Dr. Clark would have done, I think every choice probably presented in the near term would, would appear suboptimal in some way, shape or form. But as Chris said, um, there are talks surrounding um, Minister Williams, who is also very well qualified um, and has a similar kind of background coming from the private sector into politics. I think you know the, the Prime Minister is, is going to have to be very thoughtful, not only about what he does in the near term. As Chris said, there is an opportunity now to think about strategy heading into the next election and to see uh, what will be the, the best move for the long term. I think you know the, the appointment of Dr. Clark has set a particular bar that will be hard. You know, it will be hard for him to meet that bar, even um, with with the opportunity that the, the next election may present. But it, it does mean, therefore, that they, they need to be thinking in a very different way around who holds the seat. Right? Mm -hmm. It's probably much less political than it has historically uh, been and, and much more about um, the, the substance uh, then of, of the person. So right. I like Chris won't, won't give an offer up a, an answer, <laughs> uh, but I think I've, I've given good context about the characteristics of the person. Right? Because mm -hmm. Dr. Clark was ultimately recruited from the private sector. He had to go through the process to become an elected MP, but um, maybe there will be a, a placeholder until they can recruit somebody else. I don't know. I see lots of names being touted as somebody who should be the next, uh, the next Minister of Finance. But elections are also due, so there is politics in the air as well. Let's move on to those interest rates now, because the BOJ has finally reduced interest rates. They've started what we hope will become a trend, and we've gone from 7% to 6.75%, so a very small reduction, Chris. Uh, what's your reaction to that reduction? Okay, so 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 the, the, the 
BOJ, uh, uh, you know, through the, 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 the Monetary Policy Committee, is being very measured. They signal, uh, not even signals, but were very clear in June that they would start to um, make more liquidity available in the market, which is a, 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 a first step towards um, easing liquidity conditions in the, in the market and, and, and therefore bringing rates down and, and, and stimulating economic activity. So they started that. Um, I believe what, and, and it's important to bear in mind that this is a forward looking, they look four to eight quarters. They don't, you know, they're not look, looking at what is in the newspaper this morning. So, so I, 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 it, 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 it seems to me that they have received, seen signals of some softening in demand in, in the economy. Um, not, it's important to bear in mind before we go on that their remit is price stability and financial sector stability, not growth or employment, which is different from the US Fed, right? Price stability and financial sector stability. So they are, they are dealing with the, the inflation, all right? So I think um, they, 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 they saw that um, if they kept up this, this rate for too long and demand in the economy slows down too much, then you, you run the risk of prices not only stabilizing, but coming down. And you also, there'd they also be some risk to the, the stability of the financial sector in, in, in general. So I think looking ahead, they have decided that, okay, we're going to take the next step, which is a quarter point down. They look at it again, September 30, November 2021, 20, December 2021. I expect that that we're going to get a little blip from in the inflation, but we're not going to worry about that. That's probably transitory. Um, but I expect that the rates will continue to, 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 to the, the, the overnight rates, the, the, the policy rates will continue to, to, to come down. Uh, but they will keep watching to make sure that the target inflation is between that four and six percent. That is, 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 is squarely part of their, their, their mandate. So I think we're at the first steps. And unless something changes dramatically, the, um, those quarter points or half point moves will continue. But Ramon, you believe that the cuts actually came too soon. Why? Well, I wouldn't say they came too soon, right? I mean, at the end of the day, as Chris said, the, the BOJ did signal uh, from June very clearly that they were moving to gradually loosen monetary policy, right? And, you know, they would have taken steps to do so. They would have introduced over $20 billion in liquidity into the system through reducing the size of their CD auctions. And we've actually seen that take hold from an interest rate perspective, even before they would have lowered the policy rate. Right? We saw BOJ CD rates going down from an average, a peak average of about 11.5% down to 8% plus. And I think the last auction cleared below 8%. Right? So we have actually started to see the effects of looser monetary policy even before this cut. It's it's difficult to sometimes to, to predict the exact timing of policy action. So we were looking probably a little bit further down um, the, the tunnel for them to actually make a move on rates. But it is set within pretty good context, right? Um, they are looking at data, as Chris said, that is is both lagged and they're also trying to make predictions um, about the future i don't think the the quarter point rate is in a rate move in and of itself expected to have an effect instead i think it is is more a signal uh, to the market as to where monetary policy is um, and them stating definitively that they're looking at looser policy of course against the backdrop of their mandate, which is price stability, uh, which is signaled by inflation being within their target range. Right? So I think it's it's all well within context for them to have moved and all well within context for the move to, to be this, this gradual and measured. Right? I saw Chris nodding in the background when he yeah, said- Yeah, no, uh, yeah what Ramon says is, have... is key. If you look at the-, the, the, inf the the um, inflation expectation survey, the BOJ uses what is done by statin. Um, it, it, it reflects what Ramon just said. I mean, they, they, there's a, there wasn't an expectation. First of all, there's an expectation that inflation would, would remain problematic. Um, 
up to, at around 7.6 percent but it's still up, up you know up to the last measurement the publication was still in the was down from 5.4 to 5.1 more importantly core inflation which doesn't include volatile food and fuel prices was was actually at 4.9 yeah right so 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 i think there are more the, the the monetary policy committee is probably a little bit more optimistic and comfortable with where inflation is than the business community right now because they, they, there was in that survey there was no expectation of a of a of a a, a reduction in, in in interest rates so, but what ramon said again is very important in that it's not a it's, it's a step you know it's like you're putting your toe in the water and see see you know it, they expect that their actions take four months to you know some months to, to 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 run through the system so i think that they are being very cautious they're making this change it's still within what we call the neutral rate so it's not really right. supposed to it may affect it may not affect you know um affect have the impact on the market that 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 um the the direction is going in uh, the, the the policy direction is going in so i i i, I do believe that it's it's a uh, it's a step and they will see what happens and decide on further steps so i, I would be reluctant to say it's it's too much too soon i think it's just a, 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 a you know half a step in a direction and they will see what happens and it's not it's not difficult to see it being reversed frankly um what, it's what, hardly what, too much it's hardly anything at all it's 0 0.25 percent yeah <laughs> but um, another conversation that we've been having ramon is the dollar the exchange yes. rate as, as the lisa hannah wrote an article about the spreads in one of the recent papers and this conversation has resurgent and research because i think we're now at 158 thereabouts to one so approaching the 160 mark which is another psychological uh, number for jamaicans what effect or what impact of any do interest rates have on the exchange rate yeah sure very good question so you know, just to talk a little bit about the direct connection between the interest rates and exchange rates in economic theory, and it plays out in reality, interest rates tend to anchor exchange rates. So in other words, the, the practical effect is that if Jamaica has a much higher interest rate than, say, the United States, right, then the the thought process, all else being equal, right, is that capital will either stay in Jamaica and, and in Jamaican dollars or flow into Jamaica and into Jamaican dollars. And the effect of that is that the exchange rate will therefore either remain stable or potentially appreciate on the side of the Jamaican dollar. Right? So as we have seen interest rates move up in the United States, we have seen interest rates move up in Jamaica, in fact. Jamaica actually started to raise rates before the Fed, right? Which is something that um, people seem to forget, even in speaking about this particular interest rate move down. The fact that there appears to be some decoupling when we, there, there really isn't decoupling, right? We, we're focused on our local factors and our local mandate vis-a-vis -vis the Fed. So the, the general relationship between interest rates, it's relative, right? And to the extent that the various central banks get their relative rates right, then it will influence the direction of the exchange rate. Now, what we have seen recently is about our depreciation, and it's not unlike what we have seen before. In Jamaica, we have started to experience over the last several years what I describe as a two-way movement in the currency. Right? We have tended towards constant depreciation over time, um, in some instances in what feels like a straight line. Right? Instead, what we have seen over the last few years is some depreciation, some appreciation, and the, the currency has, has remained relatively range-bound, and it has actually responded very well to monetary policy and other central bank action. So I wouldn't be too perturbed by the recent bout of depreciation that we've seen in the currency. It's, it's volatility, which is healthy for financial markets. It allows for um, a true market to develop where it's not a situation where people feel confidence when they're only on one side of the currency, right? they're when they're invested in US dollars, for example. But instead, it's unpredictable. They're not sure whether 
their US dollar will be worth more Jamaican dollars a year from now. And, and that's very good for the maturity of our market and the maturity of our currency. Well, Chris, is there any direct correlation between where interest rates are and where the way the currency moves? Yeah, yeah. Well, well Raman explained it very, very, very well. The return on U.S. assets versus Jamaican assets. If if U.S. rates are 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 higher relatively, then then money will flow into the U.S. dollar. The demand for the U.S. dollars will will increase, and therefore the price of the U.S. dollar will increase, and vice versa. If interest rates in Jamaica are higher, money come, U.S. comes from U.S. instruments into into Jamaica, you have um, some steadiness or even even appreciation. So, so that is that is well accepted. But here's why I'm not worried. The the our balance balance of payments remains relatively stable, a little positive, which is a good thing up to the last quarter. Um, the the interest rate differential between the U, U.S. assets and Jamaican assets relatively uh, is not out of whack, and yeah. um, that would cause you know, funds to rush in one direction or the other. And, and you know, the, the sort of the, the shotgun under the bed is, is um, or international reserves, which stands at 5.3 billion. So, so we are well armed to, to fight um, any depreci unwelcome depreciation or shocks that will cause some instability in the FX market. Uh, uh, I, I I suspect you know every now and again you see movements in the in the FX market and you wonder okay someone is per speculating here that used to work you know over many years but no again as as astutely recognized by Rowan that it can move against you so people are not as 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 as, as given to speculation um, in the in the in the in the in the markets again you know and that's sign that's a sign of maturity so. Yes, it has moved. We may move to 160, but it is not unstable and it is not going to run away and get out of control. Mm -hmm. Now, before we wrap up, Ramon, I need to ask you to wear your Barita CEO, Barita Investment CEO cap because you're reporting some very impressive results. 98% increase in profits. Is this for the quarter? Yes, third quarter. What drove this dramatic increase? And is it a one off or is it something that will be sustained? You know, good question, um, and thanks for it. So Q3 was a good one for us. We, we registered an 11% increase in our revenues relative to Q3 of last year, to $2.1 billion. And that was primarily driven by what we have described as a resurgence of traditional revenues. So everything is connected, right? Um, the discussion about monetary policy just now is, is very instructive. What we've seen, Kalila, is improvements in areas of our business where we suffered some revenue destruction as monetary policy evolved over the previous quarters, right? So, for example, we would have seen an almost tripling in our net interest income relative to Q3 of last year. We're now we're generating more interest income relative to interest expense uh, by virtue of the positive effects of our assets repricing to higher interest rates and our liabilities either remaining stable or actually repricing down as we've seen the previous quarters of interest rate stability. And now we're seeing interest rate declines. We have seen a return of an uplift in our trading revenues from our traditional portfolios, our fixed income and equity portfolios uh, that moved up materially during the quarter. We have seen improvements in our FX business, our Cambio business uh, during the quarter relative to the previous financial year. So that drove the 11% increase in revenue. We've also seen a downturn in our expenses. So during the quarter, we saw 20%, 20 plus percent reduction in our expenses. And that was driven primarily by a reduction in our people cost uh, relative to Q3 of the previous year, as well as a reduction in our overall administrative expenses as we have been even more judicious in, in managing discretionary expenses and looking at how we can influence down structural expenses um, in the business. So we're, we're being very systematic about that. So both of those things combined to drive the increase in profitability that you described. We moved from about just north of 500 million in Q3 last year to 981 million in Q3 of this year. As to whether the, the drivers are sustainable, we think several of them are, are entrenched um, and mm -hmm. will be sustained 
looking out to, to future quarters. So the market is returning. We're seeing signs of it, right? So, I mean, naturally, the, the shift in, say, investor confidence, uh, which has been lower than previous years, didn't happen overnight, right? And therefore, the inflection higher is not going to happen overnight. In a similar way, interest rates didn't get to their current levels overnight. Um, and in the same way, we expect some gradual retreat. And, and frankly, I don't anticipate in the near term that we'll get to the lows of previous years, right? I mean, central banks around the world were in synchrony at near zero rates. Um, we actually experienced for the first time in, in history or on record negative interest rates in some economies, Kalila. So we're not expecting that to return, uh, but certainly as market conditions abate and to the extent that companies say in the local market start to show and prove to the extent that the, the blip that we expect in inflation locally is in fact a blip and we start to see positive signs hold over the next few quarters. Certainly, I think that's a, that's a runway for, for the market to come back, uh, wouldn't you say? I would sure hope so. Yes. What is that, Chris? No, I'm, look, it's, it's it, and again, just in, in, in in theory, I, I'm not elbow deep in, in 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 that space in Jamaica, but but as um, as rates come down, you are you are going to see um, you know money looking for a little bit better returns and are, you know interest in, in the in, in the stock market returning. Um, you know, there's been some interesting movements in the bond market domestically, which is you know through the the, the Jamaica Stock Exchange. We like to continue to watch that, but but with um, just the, the, the placing and holding of funds at the at higher rates um, versus um, getting back in, into the market. Now, I think that getting back into the market is going to be looking a little bit more attractive, or certainly that is the, the direction of movement. So, so some 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 life could return. Uh, you know, we want to continue to watch um, earnings, economic activity, profit, real profit growth. You know, outside of inflation. Um, see what the, the, the P's are and, and, and so on. But I, I, I am optimistic for um, some more vibrancy in the, in the Jamaican stock markets. Oh, we all are. We're all hoping for that. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Chris Stokes, Ramon Small Ferguson. Appreciated. No thank problem. you very much, Khalil. All Thanks the best. You. Thank you. Take care.